All right, welcome back everybody for another Real Talk with your boy JT. I pray all is well with everybody as we give the most high all the honor, the glory, and all the praise and worship. My title says, Spiritual Whores. I know that's a rough title, but I want to deal with this as the Lord put this heavy, and I mean heavy in my spirit. As I was talking to my brother K. Ray earlier, we was talking about spiritual whores. It's a lot of people that's spiritually whoring right now and might not even know it. Following the great whore. And it's amazing to me how the most high used, we could say, sexual imagery to describe how we whore after other things. Like false religions, um, worldly wisdom, idols of this world. Every time you look around, somebody want to be like somebody else. But you don't hear too many people talking about they want to be like the Most High. And I hear so many people talking about the prostitutes on the corner. The hoes in a club. The hoes in the world. The hoes that's doing this. But a lot of people right inside of the church are spiritually hoeing around. And they don't even know it. This is why you got to be very careful when you're talking about that woman that... That, that you call a whore when you can't really look in the mirror at yourself. See, I'm talking about spiritual whores. But let's keep it real also. You got people inside of the church who are really hoes and spiritual hoes. Just keeping it real, y'all. I'm not down to nobody. I'm not condemning nobody. We can get it right. When I say we, I'm talking about all of us. If we if we falling by the wayside, you, you can repent, turn from, and never do again. And this is, trust me, this is straight out of love. Women, I'm not down in none of y'all in no kind of way because I want to talk about this by rightly dividing about prostituting yourselves. It's more than one way to prostitute. Most people think when you say prostitute, that's just that woman on the corner selling her body for money. Or she being pimped. This woman doing it, but you can prostitute yourself in different ways, y'all. In different ways. A lot of people are following the great whore. Now y'all know from those that studied along with me in Revelation when we got around chapter 17 we talked about this. In Revelation 17 the Most High told us he will show judgment of the great whore that sit it upon many waters. Now, some people are going to say that's just a fairy tale. They got all these pictures and drawings, and that's what it means. Let me tell you what it means from what the Bible says, not what I've made up. From studying the word, when you look at that great whore talking about sitting on many waters, it's talking about the multitudes of people. A lot of people are whoring after the Antichrist. Something the Most High said was to come out of her, just like he would call Israel her. That's spiritual adultery. When you hoeing around, see, when you look at the way the Most High showed us with Israel, that was his big problem too, with them hoeing after false gods. We got a lot of people right now hoeing after false religions, false gods, the idols of this world. Who do you think was the great harlot in Revelation? What was all the fornicating about being committed by who? Who was Babylon or Babylon the Great? See this thing about spiritual whores. This is a seducing spirit. Been going on for a long time, y'all. See, let me let me talk about this again with Israel. I always like to go back to the beginning. And I know there's some harsh words coming from the most high. Because the way he laid it out. He said, he said that Israel was a harlot. Because she, Israel, I'm saying, her, kept betraying the Most High many times. Spiritual hoeing, spiritual seduction has been going on. They backslid. Talking about what Israel done and talking about what a lot of us are doing right now. How many times have we went against his will? Now, it was something that was laid out, and I'm just having a real talk video once again, but I'll come back and we'll do scripture by scripture.
to, to back up a lot of what I'm saying. But to those who, you know, I'm trying to get y'all with the real talk, y'all know who you are. When you study on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, well, our father put it like this. He said that the sister of Jerusalem was Sodom. He said Sodom was the spiritual sister of Jerusalem in so many ways. See, we got preachers who are pretty much like harlots, seducers, spiritually whores, and worldly whores. We know it's all in. We got worldly, we got spiritually. Y'all catch what I'm saying? All these fake gospels out here, that's what these preachers are doing that do this. Not all preachers. But they using this watered down prosperity gospel to seduce people, to get money. Yeah, I'm busting on them. I don't care. Truth hurt. All this talking about getting rich and sowing a seed, but ain't too many people, people talking about your soul prospering. Something wrong with that doctrine. Because the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and then what? Lose his soul. You, pros you prostituting your soul. You selling out. A lot of people say you can't sell. You can't sell out. You can't sell your soul. Whatever your other God is you serving, you done, you done pretty much made that your master. The Bible say you can't serve two of them. You're going to love one and hate the other. Two masters be anything. Money, women, drugs, your job. Whatever you put before the Most High, that's your master. See, the thing is, y'all, I'm talking about inside of the church building. Satan has people in position and they stay ready at all times. Spiritual whores and spiritual seducers, you know what they come as? Angels of light. I'm telling you and warning you, don't be deceived by these spiritual whores and they seducing spirit. See, let me, let me keep it real because people always got a problem with me on her when I address sex. Like sex was never a part of the Bible when sex is one of the biggest things going on and one of the biggest problems going on. We're always talking about sex and, and sleeping around. But you know what? That's bad to do too. Let's keep it real. But you know what's also terrible? A terrible sin that's totally against the laws and the love of our of our father is when you fornicate or make love with the wrong God. Somebody catch this later. You done pretty much gave your heart to a whorish God that wants your soul. That's what you're doing. That's how crazy on it. Spiritual people, y'all know what I'm talking about. A lot of people are in spiritual fornication. This is how the Most High laid it out. This ain't my word. Hoarding around and you ain't even on the corner. Hmm. Hoarding around spiritually doing something else. Oh, we quick to blast on the prostitute once again. But it's a lot of folks sitting in the church. Some are probably looking at this video know what I'm talking about. And they looking in the mirror saying, I am a spiritual whore. I've been there before. JT, you ever been in the spiritual whores? Yep. I was in the world, whoring around point, one point of time. And even when I came into Christ, when I thought I was in, I thought I was really in them, but I was just in the building. Didn't know nothing. Didn't know nothing at first. I was, I was being deceived by that, that seducing spirit. And that's how sin portrays to be it. It comes at you because Satan know what you like. He know what you love. And that's the way he presents it to you. But a lot of times we're doing a lot of stuff on our own. This sounds crazy a little bit. This is for the ones on the meat. Some of us making love to everything the devil loves. We supposed to flee from all this stuff, y'all. Let me, let me break it down a little bit more. Because the most high uses a, a, a strong human urge like sex we're talking about. This is what he used. 
he tied it in with this to describe his relationship with us, with Israel. He considered Israel the wife. He said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. What is the church called? The bride. The bride of Christ. Now don't that sound like marriage, a wedding, a wife, a husband? He uses sexual imagery to describe how we whore after everything else and we don't follow him. He said, don't be like the heathens. Don't do what the pagans do. Most of us turn right around and do it. We mark the idols of this world. We love to do everything the world do and call it holy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And he said, anybody who loves the world is an enemy of him. See, videos like this, I know they, they, make, they make people mad because I'm talking about what most Christians love. Well, what do you mean, JT? Let me throw it out there. A holiday. Let me, let me talk about Halloween. Hmm. These holidays versus holy days. The things that the world loves. Christians who dress in their children up like ghosts and goblins and witches and celebrating the devil's high Sabbath. Things that the most I say stay away from, we put it together and say it's cool. Doing the same thing. Most Christians love to get involved in everything that the world do. Let me, let me tie it in and keep it a little bit more real. Because some people married, I know a lot of them, they don't even treat their own husband or wife right. And then some of them do their bodies any kind of way. Smoke they self to death, drink they self to death, whatever it is that they fighting with. The reason why I'm saying is because I want to make this point. If you can't do your earthly wife or husband right, thank you Holy Ghost, put it together. If you don't treat each other right as husband and wife, how are you going to treat the Most High right? How are you going to be married to the Father you can't even stay married to your earthly husband or wife? See, this, this is something that's not taught. So now do y'all see this big picture of how we can spiritually whore around and be spiritually seduced by these things of this world and you become a spiritual Whore. Following the great whore. Y'all see what I'm saying? If you have you ever read Hosea chapter four? Have you ever studied that? Powerful. Powerful. I'm not gonna get into that. I'll do that in another video, but read Hosea chapter four. So the thing is, as I try to wrap this video up, y'all, the Most High said, a spirit of whoredom causes us to leave him. That's what caused Israel to leave him. And they became spiritual whores. That's what happened. They sacrifice to demons. They start serving other gods. What you think happened to Solomon in the long run? He messing with all them women that was full of that wickedness and idolatry. They caused Solomon to turn his heart from the Most High. But the thing I like about it, our Savior offered forgiveness and restoration. Even to those who fell by the wayside. I hear I heard church people all the time, once again, condemning the prostitute all the time. But they never try to reach out to her. And they don't even know that most of them in the church are horned more than she is. Some of y'all will catch that later. We all know what prostitution is. And we can say this. 
Prostitution is sinful. It'll tear up everything. Sin tears up everything. It destroys marriages, families, lives. But check this out. When you spiritually hoeing, it destroys your spirit and your soul. And you know what that leads to? A physical and spiritual death. That's my time on this one. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. There's so much I can say, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed night. Take care. Don't be a spiritual whore. Be on the most high side. Peace and remain blessed.